Hello everyone and welcome to Season 7, Episode 45 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host Travis McNeil and today we continue our countdown of the top 50 matches in Chikara history with match number 6 on our list, which is the best 2 out of 3 falls match for the Chikara Campeonatos de Parejas between the champions, the BDK of Claudio Castagnoli and Aris, and the challengers of Mike Quackenbush and Jigsaw from the Chikara Reality is Relative event held on December the 12th of 2010. Um, this match is, in my humble opinion, the best Campeonatos uh, match of all time. Um, it is one of the great, you know, blow-off matches, if we want to call it that, of all time. It is so absolutely satisfying. It pains me a little bit to have this match at number six and not, you know, crack that top five. Uh, because I, I really think that, you know, it, it deserves to be considered one of the, the best Chikara matches ever. And somehow it's one that I feel still kind of slips under the radar a little bit, maybe isn't held in as such a high regard as, you know, so many of the other big-time Chikara classics that we know and love. Um, this match uh, was, you know, the season finale of 2010, and we saw it the season finale of 2009, uh, the BDK debut. Uh, throughout 2010, they would absolutely dominate the Chikara roster. They would immediately be, you know, they being Claudio and, uh, and Aries, um, immediately win the Campeonatos de Parejas from the Colony. They would go on to cheat their way into winning King of Trios. Um, they would beat every team in Shakara, you know, all throughout the calendar year in all of these cheap title defenses, some of which we've already talked about on this countdown. Um, you know, just this run that, you know, was very similar in a way to the NWO, um, but this match really shows it's all about not making the same mistakes that WCW made with the NWO. Um, this is Sting and Hogan at Starcade 1997, uh, but done the way that that match should have been done, where the baby faces they, you know, are able to overcome all of the same tropes and techniques that we'd seen in all of the, you know, the heels dominant title reign um, to finally get that big moment and pay off everything that they've been building to. I talked about that, you know, in the other videos when I talked about the BDK versus Incoherence and, and uh, you know, the BDK versus the Colony and the King of Trios finals. Um, that, you know, you had all of these matches throughout 2010 where, you know, you would have this super, super hot crowd that wants the baby faces to win and it creates this great atmosphere, but then the rug gets pulled out from underneath the crowd, the heels win by some sort of nefarious, cheap tactic, um, you know, and you can only do that so much before, you know, your, your fan base grows sick of it, grows tired of it, and starts to check out, and, you know, in, in the case of you know, an independent promotion stops giving you their money, stops attending those shows, stops buying those DVDs, um, you know, stops subscribing to your streaming service, you know, to make it more relevant for nowadays. Um, but here, you know, Chikara knew that and they knew, you know, what was the right moment to give that payoff and it is this match. Um, we'd started to see some cracks in the foundation of the BDK, you know, a little bit. We'd seen them finally drop a fall in a title defense against 3.0, which was a big moment. We saw them lose in the dark Cybernetico um, when Eddie Kingston ultimately ended up toppling Tursus in the final, you know, pairing of that match. Uh, so we'd seen those cracks started to form. This felt like the right moment, you know, for that big title change and for everything to come crashing down for them. But again, you don't know, right? We have seen so many times where you get these moments that seem like they're going to be it. And then, you know, again, that, that rug gets pulled out from underneath you. So um, we didn't know for sure, but it felt like this could be the moment. Um, right off the hop, Wink Vavasur, who was the director of fun at the time, comes out and removes Derek Sabato from the match and appoints Bryce Remsburg as the referee. And this was a huge moment. Um, we had Dieter von Stiegwalt, who was the director of fun, uh, you know, in the BDK's back pocket um, that had been appointing, um, you know, Derek Sabato as the referee. Uh, he was basically the Nick Patrick of the BDK, um, you know, the heel referee that would help them win and cheat, you know, all throughout their matches. And Bryce, you know, was basically uh, delegated to go to the, the commentation station and be a commentator instead. So this was Bryce's return to, you know, main event, you know, senior referee form. Um, so a great moment to start. Then we get another playoff, the title reign of the BDK, where Delirious, who had been, um, you know, possessed by the Eye of Tear by the BDK, uh, rushes the ring to try to attack Jigsaw and, uh, and Mike Quackenbush. Uh, so many times we'd see Delirious, you know, cost the Technicos the first fall of these title matches. Uh, but this time he's stopped by Eddie Kingston standing up for Chikara. 
um, who carries him out, and, you know, we get this hot fight underway right at the start of the match. We get double topes, we get the faces isolating Claudio while Ares gets taken out with dives. Um, you know, all of these hot moves and near falls on him, um, and eventually it leads to a roll-up sequence where uh, Mike Quackenbush is able to pin Claudio with the alligator clutch uh, for a very quick three count and a quick one nothing lead for the baby faces, which at this point had never happened. We're so used to seeing, you know, the heels get that early 1-0 lead through cheating. Um, so to see it go the other way just really started this match off on the right foot. Um, the crowd is so hot. We get all of the, the baby faces from the back, you know, coming out and surrounding the ring, that old Chikara staple, showing their support for Team Chikara against these invaders from the BDK that have tormented the entire roster all year long. We get, you know, really good heat on Quack throughout this match where the back gets worked and Claudio really slows him down. Um, how they, they end up doing a, a hot tag in this match is just so genius to me um, where, you know, Quack is unable to tag out, keeps getting cut off. Uh, but they do this spot where him and Ares basically collide heads, bonk heads, and Quack falls out to the floor from it. And that, you know, under Lucha rules, forces the hot tag to jig. And it just felt so organic and real um, that, you know, it's just this errant mistake, this miscalculation of these two guys butting heads, you know, led to this, this you know, um, big swing in momentum in the match. Uh, so we get, you know, House of Fire jigsaw. Um, but then we get, you know, again, the BDK, all of these, you know, heel tax, tactics that they've used come back into play where Claudio attacks Bryce from behind and a callback to that happening at King of Trios. Derek Sabato comes back out. Um, you know, there's no other referee at this point, so he's back in the match. Um, Claudio puts the reverse Chikara special, which was, you know, the hold that we kind of saw the month before the BDK debut, where Pinky Sanchez, you know, used that hold as Carpenter Ant, which, you know, really made Quack start to question things a little bit. Um, so we see that, you know, used, and Sabato forces Quack to tap out to that for a 1-1 a one, uh, one, one, uh, tie. Uh, Jigsaw, so great in this match, like he always is, is that scrappy baby face fighting from underneath. Um, he, you know, fights against two, this two-on-one disadvantage. He hits all of this great combination offense and these big dives and everything like that. Sabato, such a great heel here. You know, slow counting all of Jigsaw's pin attempts and fast counting everything for the BDK. Um, of course, Jigsaw eats a 6,000 feet, you know, crazy, crazy high Swiss death in this match. Um, he counters the Ricola bomb into a Yoshi tonic for a really hot near fall. Um, he counters the UFO from Claudio into a DDT. Um, he's just really rocking and rolling and showing he won't be denied and putting in one of the best performances of his career. Um, and something that I love that, again, just really puts over, like, how big of a threat Jigsaw was is the BDK realizes they're not going to be put, able to put him away. So uh, Ares actually dumps Jigsaw to the floor and bring, you know, which forces the tag and then it allows them to go back over on Quack. So, um, you know, you get used to these guys, you know, making hot tags, these Southern style tag matches that build to the hot tag where here it was completely the opposite. It was the wrestler in the ring was a house of fire. So they just got rid of him and brought, you know, the, the tired, sore, worn out guy back in to try to take advantage of that. Um, Quack gets, you know, a bunch of, of, you know, big time moves. He gets the QD3 and a double underhook superplex from the top. But again, with Sabato there, there's no way the baby faces are going to win. Um, Quack hits a power bomb on Claudio Castagnoli in this match, which just was, was just absolutely mind-blowing. A uh, huge size difference there, a huge, you know, strength difference there. Um, so that was really wild, but he's unable to hold the Chikara spe special. Um, he gets destroyed with, you know, a triple Ricola bomb from Claudio when he counters a, a Dragon Rana. Um, and it leads, you know, to finally this big moment where Bryce is back up. He pulls Sabato out of the ring, which we've seen so many times Bryce get pulled out of the ring in these BDK matches. He decks Derek Sabato. Um, first time we've ever seen Bryce really get physically involved in a match. Um, the crowd absolutely loses their mind for it. They're so hot. They're so insane. It's so great. Uh, Jigsaw, you know, knocks everybody out with super kicks, hits the Jig and Tonic on Arez, and it's enough for three. And I can't stress enough how much I love that it was Jigsaw that got the win here. Quack didn't need it. This was all about his student, you know, getting the big victory, getting the titles, you know, for him and his mentor, and finally dethroning, you know, these tyrants of the BDK. 
Um, the post-match is so excellent. The crowd is, you know, banging the mat, you know, really in there with all of, of the baby faces, you know, just blurring the lines between fan and performer, you know, really stressing that, you know, we are Chikara thing that we would see later, um, you know, just showing that how much, you know, this, this, you know, predetermined scripted entertainment, you know, can completely, um, you know, engage an audience and make them believe. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. Um, Gavin Loudspeaker, the Chikara uh, ring announcer, hits a Stone Cold Stunner on the BBK's, you know, ring announcer, Jakob Hammermeyer, uh, which was another great moment. You know, they'd had a bunch of physicality and angst throughout the year. Um, and something that I, I really love, a great choice that was made, is during all of this, there's no commentary. Um, so just the, the commentators, uh, they, you know, silence themselves for it. And it just gives you this great opportunity to just feel and live in the moment. And I think, uh, you know, on mass produced wrestling, like we see in WWE and, and AEW, uh, you know, they feel the need to constantly have that talking happening or else the, the crowd will lose interest. Uh, sometimes it's just, it's not needed. It's so much better just to hear that crowd noise. And like I said, to, to really feel it. And that's what they did here, which was a super smart choice. Um, I love this match so much. It, like I said, it came at the right moment. Um, the perfect, you know, cap and blow off to this year long BDK storyline. Yes, the BDK would stick around for, you know, several years after this, maybe a little bit too long, um, going through different incarnations. Um, but this really was, you know, the proper end to their reign of terror as it should have been. Uh, just an absolutely phenomenal story packed match, which with one of the hottest small, you know, independent crowds that you're ever going to see. Uh, just an, an absolute joy to watch. You can watch this match, of course, on independentwrestling.tv. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again next time as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.